I am Johanna Winters. I am a printmaker, puppeteer, and um, video artist based in Kansas City, Missouri. And I, for the last five or so years, have been making work about the aging female body and the, the sort of conditioned shame and pleasure of aging, um, particularly in a female body. And that has folded itself into uh, puppet performance. In grad school, there was this very exciting shift for me where I kind of put traditional printmaking on pause and started working in performative puppetry. And I, I was so um, seduced by the directness and the ease of paper mache and how you don't need you know, specialized equipment to make something. The most recent body of work that I finished and that I'm still thinking about and, and will ultimately be um, something I'm continuing while um, at the EMAR residency, um, started from these large masks that I had made and performed with in graduate school. So they were kind of grotesque like um, paper mache masks of what looked like aged women, but you know they were worn by bodies of women in their early thirties. Um, and I, through the performances and just as standalone sculptures, I was thinking about like, what, what is the condition of these characters? Um, like what is dear to them? What do they care about? Are they like, are they beautiful? What, how do ugliness and beautiful or beauty um, need each other to to have a reference point? Looking through the masks, like my viewpoint as aware of the mask is the the nostrils of the this large head. And through that kind of skewed um, aperture, it's like, you know, a very narrowed um, periphery. And that viewpoint felt like, maybe a significant lens that I could make videos through. And so I was thinking about filming videos from the perspective or the vantage point of this character who is pretending she's being watched because she so desperately you know, wants to be witnessed, but she knows that she is solitary. Um, and so I made a little aperture out of masking tape and I started filming through that sort of portal. So it became like both her viewpoint or her vantage point and the the audience peering into what she's seeing. Um, so there's it's sort of voyeuristic, but you know, it's both you are her and watching her. And like what does that mean to to be watched and um like just thinking about objectification, but also desire and longing. Um, you know, it all ties back to these anxieties around um, how a body is valued um, as it matures. And, and certainly after a woman's body has passed um, a window of biological relevance, you know, how does culture view that that form and how how does one how do you deal with the the fear of becoming obsolete or perhaps invisible? I want it to be familiar at first, but also like I think of it as like slightly turned adjacent to what is familiar. So there, there's like something in the work that is identifiable as close to human. Um, but then there's also something very not human. And I, I guess I'm interested in like burrowing into that in between space. Maybe it's a psychological space. I don't, you know, it's not like I draw maps of the environment. Um, I'm still kind of and maybe that that's the part of the, why the work still exists is because there's questions about that I have about like what does their world look like um or are they just is it the same character 
manifesting in different ways or, and do I have to answer these questions or can it just keep posing, can the work keep posing questions? None of it is fully resolved in my mind, but that's part of the impetus to keep making it. Knowing that the audience is seeing something maybe they haven't seen before, that's, that's really um, gratifying and like a, dri a driving force for live performance. I think that that is the power of any kind of artist to make those moments of like delight or surprise or e even confusion um, because it is rare to, to encounter something that's like, I have not seen anything like this before.